let's talk about hydration and minerals, okay? The remineralization of the body is what it's all about. When we talk about making a shift in your diet, really what has to happen is you want to move towards alkalizing, alkalizing foods. All that means is minerals in the right amounts, the right kinds and the right amounts, calcium, potassium, magnesium. Having these minerals available to you, available for the cells of the body, that's what we're talking about when we talk about moving towards alkalinity, is it's bringing the right minerals into the body in bioavailable ways so that the cells can get access to it regularly, never get depleted. So a lot of that remineralization process can happen through juicing and smoothies, right? Because there you're taking nutrient-dense liquids, which are very easy for the body to digest. And we're taking those liquids in and we're digesting them and boom, they go right in. Quick, good, amazing source of energy, amazing source of minerals. And this is so important. Our lives are so toxic. Most of us live a toxic life, very stressed, right? Very busy. And through addiction, my God, I mean, we've depleted our bodies utterly of nutrients. So when we get into recovery, and what are we trying to recover? We're trying to recover a sense of ease. Addiction is a dis-ease. We want to move towards ease. How do we recover it? Well, certainly we're going to have to be well hydrated. Certainly we want to bring what the body needs in. So minerals. We're going to need to explore the plant kingdom. That's where it's going to take place. This does not mean you have to be vegetarian. By no means am I saying that. It does mean, however, you will have to bring more and more vegetables into your diet and expand your palate so you get lots of different kinds of vegetables, lots of different colors of vegetables, lots of different kinds of food coming into your diet and bringing those minerals in. So it takes a little while to make these transitions, right? As we start to drink juices, as we start to eat more vegetables and bring more healthy, organic, nutrient-dense food, into our body, the body starts to like it. But it takes a little moment of time, longer for some of us than others, depending on what you've been eating and what you've been doing and the toxic level of your body. It takes a little time before the body gets used to this. What happens if we go too fast? If you go too fast, you bring about what's called a cleanse reaction. A cleanse reaction is simply when the cells of your body and, and the organs of your body start to throw off some toxins. And those toxins come off quick. Now you think to yourself, well, wait a minute, Tommy, isn't it good to get rid of those toxins? Well, it is good. But first they get thrown into the bloodstream. And so there's a higher, slightly higher toxic level in the bloodstream and it's uncomfortable. It doesn't feel well. So what you wanna do is flush that out as fast as you can with lots and lots of water. This is what people do when they go, for example, on a juice cleanse. You might drink a lot of leafy green juices right away, and one day, two days into that cleanse, you really feel tired, uh, maybe headachy, low energy, a little bit of um, like flu symptoms, like low-grade flu symptoms, and you think, oh, I'm getting sick. It's not exactly true. Your body is detoxing. Um, so that's what happens if you go too fast. Now we're not talking here, and I'm not talking here about a juice cleanse. That's not part of our program. But a juice cleanse is just when somebody wants to really detoxify at a very deep level. And that's what they do. And they will go through that process of um, uh, a detox reaction, and they'll come out the other side feeling really good. It just takes a couple of days. Uh, in the meantime, we don't wanna go too fast, but we do wanna bring minerals in. And so we have to entrain the body to do certain things. So understand, here's the takeaway. There is a protocol to come off of foods that the body handles a certain way in favor of foods that the body can handle with greater efficiency, greater energy, greater long-term health, and of course, longevity. So that's the protocol that I'm interested in and, and I've gotten a chance to really learn it over the past quarter, quarter century. 
as I've made just about every mistake you can make. And I've watched people make every mistake they could make. And we've kind of learned through trial and error um, through all these years uh, to finally get to a place where we really understand how this works, okay? Now, quick word about sugar and caffeine. Quick, quick word about sugar and caffeine. So many people talk about, okay, I've got a sugar problem. I'm gonna go off sugar. Um, okay, I've got a caffeine uh, problem. I need to go off caffeine. So again, we wanna be very careful in our approach. We don't wanna overdo things and we certainly don't wanna to go too quickly with this. So with sugar especially, it's like our friend who was eating a bacon cheeseburger one day and he wants to become a vegan the next day. Like it's not advised, it's not a, a, a wise strategy uh, for carrying out success through that process. Coming off of sugar, let's be specific here. The body needs glucose to survive. The cells of the body work on, and they're, they're fueled by glucose. Glucose come is, is a form of sugar. So whatever we're eating, whatever we're doing, the body is ultimately gonna break it down into that glucose um, along with other amino acids, enzymes, minerals, vitamins. But our body feeds on that glucose and we live on that. We can't do without it. So it's actually not incorrect to say we're going to go off of sugar. <laughs> what I think we mean is we're going to go off of unnecessary and egregious and unhealthy forms of sugar. Maybe you guys have been to, um, been used to drinking sodas. So if you drink sodas, I'm here to tell you that it's time to let go of that. It's depleting, it depletes the minerals of the body, it is not good for the teeth, and it is not hydrating. And it's filled with either sugar or something worse than sugar, which would be aspartame or high fructose corn syrup. So if you're listening to this and you drink sodas on any kind of regular basis, um, I want to ask you to consider letting that go in exchange for something that will really hydrate and nourish the cells of your body. So that's an example of a sugar that can just go. Uh, other examples, uh, cakes, cookies, pies, ice cream. Now, does this mean you have to give up cakes, cookies, pies, and ice cream forever? Of course you don't. These are lovely things when you're not in a state of addiction and when you're not addicted to those things. So for example, this week, I went out and I had uh, um, a, a scoop of gelato. I had a scoop of vanilla gelato. I'm coming right out telling you that. And I enjoyed it. And you know what else I noticed? The next morning, I felt a kind of a dry mouth that I'm not used to. So, okay, I enjoyed my gelato. And I felt that my body actually had a little reaction to that gelato. I took note of it and I was like, hmm, you know, it's not something I feel like revisiting too often. Maybe next year again sometime, who knows? But the point is, this is not about rigidity. If you wanna have your cake, your cookie, your ice cream, whatever it is, you can have anything you want. But the directive is go there understanding if it's helping you or hurting you. Go there understanding if it is an addictive response to something going on in your life, or if it's actually something you just want to enjoy every now and then because it's a sweet thing and, and there's nothing wrong with enjoying that. A very wise teacher of mine said, Tommy, if you can really truly enjoy the cookie, then enjoy the cookie. If you eat that cookie and you start going into a, a psychotic addictive thought process about the cookie, maybe it's time for you not to have that cookie for a while or maybe ever. So some of you may be struggling with what you would consider to be food addiction in a serious way. Food binging, um, bulimia, anorexia. I am not speaking about principles and concepts perhaps that apply directly to you. If you are dealing with severe food addiction of any kind, you might have a protocol or uh, an approach to this that requires a certain amount of rigidity 
that requires very clear, bright lines. You may have an approach that you've developed which works for you to help you with your food addiction, and I celebrate you a thousand percent. So if I'm saying anything that that concerns you or that is not in align with in alignment with your perspective or the way that you need to be around food, please know that I'm talking about how I am and what I'm suggesting for people who are not dealing with severe food addiction. So please don't be confused around that point. I celebrate anything you must do uh, to get yourself healthy and well. I'm looking for health at the end of the day. I'm looking for balance. I'm looking for the cells of my body to be nourished. I'm looking to be well hydrated. I wanna think clearly. I wanna have energy to pursue my mission and purpose. I wanna poop really well and regularly. I wanna sleep well and I don't wanna get sick. And if I'm doing those things on the diet that I've chosen for myself, congratulations me and congratulations you. So that's, just want you to be clear where I'm headed. And